is going on guys today we're going to talk about starting businesses from scratch because um i feel that this toro business that this um hire car business, this car rental business was very, very beneficial for me because I have been, for the last 12 years, I've been starting internet-based businesses, you know, starting with the publishing of my uh, ebook and physical book and online courses and stuff. And when you put together a non-online business from scratch, there's a lot of moving parts. Like, uh, essentially what I have come up with is a plan. I am not trying to do multiple things. So today I should finish buying cars. This should happen today. Hopefully it happens today. Not today, by Monday. And then we move to phase two. Because here's the thing. And this is what messes up so many people. I'm going to talk about the YouTubers. 30-day challenge, seven-day challenge. One of the things that I'm beginning to consistently see is how the online messaging is infecting regular people. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that when you hear a message over and over and over, whether you have any clarification or actual experience, you assume that it's true. I saw a YouTuber post, what's the fastest way to get rich in uh, investing or start a business? And like 80% people chose investing. I was just like, the messaging that you guys are getting, go out, get in real estate, get you some rentals, um, bigger pockets um, essentially one of the things that they go in is they highlight these people who've amassed large rental portfolios very quickly without going into the details without getting into the weeds because uh, you know there was one where she actually said my investors so I, I had a clue to how that she did it because she had built a syndication network, right? And one of the biggest things is that your guys are getting so much messaging that says, hey, you can start a business. It's not going to be hard. You're going to make a lot of money. And it's something you can do very quickly. This is the messaging. You can start a business. It's not going to be hard. You're gonna make a lot of money. You can do it really quickly. And when I say quickly, I'm talking about within um, weeks, not months, weeks, that you could be making fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in a matter of weeks from scratch. Quit your job. And what I want to do is bring a different conversation to the internet because I know for a fact. That's BS. Like, one of the favorite things I see on YouTube is these how to make money quick challenges of 30 days that people understand you want money, understand maybe you're struggling, understand maybe you want to put something together. But the messaging, in my opinion, is so harmful because if you don't have the truth, then you're going to make decisions based on false narratives. It is an absolute false narrative that you're going to start a business within a few weeks and be making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. That's a false narrative for most people. That's a false narrative for most people. It's just not going to pan out. And so many people are feeling this are they've become part of the story uh, this is one of the reasons that I'm really critical of many youtubers because you know I will start my expose probably next week on savage finance 
because they, they put out this messaging and as a collective, I'm one of the few guys that's out here saying, hey, that's not correct. That's actually wrong. And that's one of the reasons I get so many hate because I'm literally around here peeing on people's dreams because you, you watch YouTube video after YouTube video that tells you you can start a business. It's not going to be that hard. You're going to make a lot of money. You can do it really quickly in a matter of weeks and quit your job. And I'm the only guy on the YouTube saying that now nah, play it ain't going to happen. And also in that vein, I want you guys to list all of the YouTubers in the comment section that you have watched that have put 10, 15, or $20,000 in your pocket. I'm not talking about chump change. A lot of YouTubers put out information that can get you chump change. 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars. I'm talking about, please put in the comments all of the YouTubers that have helped you make livable income. A nice livable income. $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 for free. Please put those YouTubers in the comment section because I'm getting a lot of blowback because I got one chat on my uh, Savage Finance. You got your nose up in the air, man. You got your... Because I'm telling people how to do it the right way. And I'm telling you that a lot of these YouTubers are straight up lying to you. They're not casually admitting certain things. Like there's one girl, I'm going to rip her because I know for a fact that she is consciously, consciously lying to you. Consciously. It isn't an accident. It isn't a mistake. It is a manipulative, calculated plan to get views. To get views. And one of the things that is um, creating these false narratives is you got people out here who are feeling like it's a false narrative that you can get richer from investing than starting a business. That's a false narrative. That's a false narrative. I've got a business that I just started, let's say, May was the first month, June is the second month. So by December, I'm gonna be doing 30, maybe $40,000 a month from this business, from scratch. Now, let's, let's go ahead and look at that. Let's take that apart. Seven months. I am a seasoned entrepreneur. I am a seasoned operator. I've had many successful businesses and it's still gonna take me seven months to get to that number. Yet you've got YouTubers out here telling people that they can do that in a matter of weeks. No experience, no training, no seasoning, no money, nothing you 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 can do it man you can do it it's just you got to take action man you got so me a seasoned operator someone who knows what they're doing someone who has capital it's going to take me seven months to get this new business to about 30 40k a month yet you with no business experience no money you're going to do that same thing in a matter of weeks if you take this 199 199.99 course I, i'm like you know i'm going to do some new training in the corporate toolbox the art of holding starting a business from scratch because um i need to do this as a separate video i will probably do this as a separate video uh one thing that people need to understand Let's take Toro. There are many videos on YouTube because people are looking for the cheat code. They're looking for um, a faster path. They're looking for a shortcut. And like with Toro, there are so many videos like the best car for Toro, right? The best car for Toro, right? Well, here's the, here's the truth. Until you actually 
buy that car and put it on the platform, you're not going to really know what it's going to do. And I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you've researched a car on Toro and you found the hostess, you found several hosts that have this car. And this car is doing really well for these hosts, right? Then you go out and buy that car and you don't get the same experience. I'm gonna tell you why. Toro, to his credit, rewards its long-term host. If you don't believe me, do this, do this search. Go to the Toro site and put in Hartsville Airport and put like two to three weeks out and go ahead and see what they list and you will see hosts that are nowhere near the airport. They're nowhere near the airport yet Toro is pushing their listings because they've been on the platform for years. Because Toro's like, well, this is uh, an experienced host that's going to take care of our customers and we're going to push traffic their way. It's very interesting. But, the, you know, uh, very interesting. I don't know how this happens because I had to snooze it because I got it rented out for a month on hire car. But my Land Rover is popping up in the airport results. And my first rental was a guy from out of town coming from the airport. So I don't know how that happened because I'm not an experienced Toro host. I haven't been there for a while. I, I mean, essentially, but essentially this, this whole conversation of starting a business from scratch, um, making money from scratch. Like I'm telling you, I am looking at December and I started with money. I started with experience. When I went into this business, I knew there were mistakes would be made. I knew that there was going to be um, issues and problems and circumstances. And what I didn't know, but I found out that I started, decided to start a car rental business doing a used car shortage. Didn't know that when I started. Because, you know, I, I really, because my cars were pretty easy to find, the Porsche and, and this. I didn't have to worry about that back then when I bought these cars. Even though, you know, because at the high upper ends, the, well, you can't find 911s. Well, 911s are starting to filter back to car gurus. I think this whole thing is starting to calm down a little bit. But there's so many things that you cannot research, you cannot talk to someone. I got more about that in a minute. Um, that the only way that you're going to know how your business is going to operate is to start your business and to start operating. That is it. Like, uh, people are coming for me because it's like, uh, your, your, your thing is talking to people is flawed. Jeff Bezos talks to people. Jeff Bezos, you know, I, I, I have him back. I was like, really? Do you know uh, Amazon Web Services didn't exist before they created it? Who did they talk to to create that? Uh, Amazon Prime didn't exist. Amazon Movies didn't exist. Who did they talk to? They had to build that stuff from scratch using their own intel. So you think Jeff Bezos is talking to someone on YouTube? Really, bro? You think Jeff Bezos is talking to someone on YouTube? It's like, hey, man, I'm a multi-billionaire, and I understand that you're doing YouTube videos from your house, and I got a few questions for you. You think, let me tell you how Jeff Bezos is getting down. Jeff Bezos is finding smart, innovative people with companies, and he's investing in those companies. That's what Jeff Bezos is doing. He ain't out here talking to people or giving information. De Amazon has created so many things from an innovative standpoint that did not exist. So it, it was cracking me up. Everyone wants to use like a Jeff Bezos. Like uh, my favorite thing is Warren Buffett still lives in the house and drives an old truck. I'm like, really? Do you know Warren Buffett has private jets? Not exactly 
a humble, regular old guy. Warren Buffett has private jets, plural. He has jets. So many people will shape up this narrative to kind of bring the conversation down to where they are versus elevating their self to where the conversation really is. And like, I'm not talking to any of these guys. Uh, Erica mentioned someone and the guy ain't even in Atlanta. He ain't even in Atlanta. He ain't even in this market. So I, I will say pretty much from um, an informational standpoint, he would be useless to me because he's not in the market. He's in a little small town where Uber and Toro, well, Toro and hire car won't work. You know, Uber and hire car, they don't work well in these little small towns um, with low populations. They just don't work that well. So they ain't really nothing he can tell me. We can sit down and have a conversation about you know, starting a car rental business, but he ain't in my marketplace. And the, once again, you got to know where to get your information from. And this is one of the reasons that uh, so many of these fake ass YouTubers are successful because people just, well, you know, he said it. It should be like that. It should be like that. Um, you know, it, 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 it should be like that. Uh, it shouldn't be that hard. It's, you know, he said it was easy. He said, you know, I could do this really quickly. He said, and you're, you're getting this consistent message from a collective of YouTubers. And when you go out and try to do this stuff, you know what? Because so many people are saying it should be like this or it should be easy that many of you are thinking maybe you don't have the stuff. Maybe you did something wrong. I'm getting ready to do a review on the guy who tried to do side hustles and his experience is what most people's experience will be. That his experience was absolute and utter failure. That was his experience, trying to do all of these side hustles. And once again, you'll see all these side hustle videos in his video, which was talking about how he tried to do side hustles and he relayed his experience and relayed his results. Ain't doing that well, but a video from someone with a good presentation, maybe they're attractive, there's a chick, she's cute as all get out, she has this beautiful smile, and she just comes up there and like, you can do it, you can do it, and her video's got like 130,000 views, and the information she's giving is practically useless from an application standpoint. It's practically useless. Um, you're not gonna be able to do the things that she said. It's just useless information. It really is. Like I was saying, a lot of the information on YouTube is entertaining and some of it is really good, but a lot of it is designed to get views versus actually uh, 800 miles. However, I'm only in charge of one. Helping you build a business or a stream of income. Like one video I was watching, you know, side hustles no one's talking about. And that right there is one of the biggest pitfalls. Everyone is looking for unearthed gold. They're looking for a hustle or something that's very lucrative that no one knows about. <clears throat> kind of reminds me of the storage auction business. When I came here on YouTube, I was talking about storage auction business. One of the main questions I hit was, is it too late or is it oversaturated? And this was in the glory days of the storage auction business. This was when it was so easy to make money. And I was getting those questions then because everyone is looking for a low hassle, low stress, highly lucrative side hustle. And this is one of the reasons that I'm telling you guys about my trials and tribulations with this rental car business because a um, few of my friends have watched the videos and it's like no one else is saying the stuff you're saying. And one of the things is that people 
want to get views. And it's kind of like the folks who were around Donald Trump. They would not give Donald Trump bad news because they know they would get fired. So I feel that that kind of ethos is going on on YouTube. People don't want to give any bad news. And um, when I did my video, uh, I got several comments like, oh, I started and I had all these experience, negative experiences and negative experiences that a lot of folks are just not talking about. You will hear someone uh, talk about Toro and said they had a car totaled, but you won't hear about um, the yard birds, the craziness, like this happened the other day. A girl wanted to rent a car, an off hire car. And she, she wanted to get on the phone with me. And this is, when they want to talk to you, it's usually gonna be some BS. So she's like, I just wanted to talk to you. And I was like, what is it? So what she wanted was for her, was for me to allow her fiance to pick up the car. And I'm like, no, you were renting the car. Because essentially, this is a slippery, slippery slope that if you get on it, that if you put it in her head that she can rent your car and she doesn't have to be the only driver, guess what's going to happen? She ain't going to be the only driver. And the, you know, I was just like, uh, no, only the renter should be driving that car. And what I did is it made me change my um, messaging on my listings on the one because I can't change the messaging on the ones that are rented, but I can change the the uh, messaging on the listings that are not rented. And uh, I had to put up there, no, no one can pick up the car for you because this is going to come up again. And then I said, well, I can bring the car to you for a fee. And she was like, oh, you just want money. I was like, absolutely guilty. Yeah, I'm doing this to make money. I'm not, you know, if I came up to you and I didn't know you and I asked you for a, a serious favor that would inconvenience you, you'd be looking at me like I was crazy. But that's what she wanted. And the, 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 one of the things that you get are um, what I like to call bogues. And bogues are people who would try to rent a car, but they don't have no money because higher car system is set up that when you go to approve them, if their credit card gets declined, <laughs> they can't rent the car. And I had like three in a row. I was like really frustrating. And there was one I thought that got away and come to find out that she called in and pulled herself out the queue. I don't know for what reason. And um, you don't hear these little stories that would be helpful to you because Honestly, I think the rental car business is like any other business. There's going to be the uglies. There's going to be an ugly side of the business. Like there's an ugly side of online courses. There's an ugly side of YouTube. There's an ugly side of starting a, a, any business where you have to deal with the public. That that That's going to be ugly. Anytime you start a business where you've got to deal with the public You've got to deal with a multitude of personalities, a multitude of attitudes, a multitude of expectation, a multitude of thought processes. And this is what the rental car business is doing. And incidentally, this is kind of funny. And I think it's because of the uh, population density of Atlanta. All my renters have been black. On Toro, all my renters have been black and on hire car. Well, actually, that's not true. On Toro, I had one white guy rent the Porsche. He was the first person to rent the Porsche. That was my only white renter. The only one. And it, it's kind of funny um, because I'm going to take anybody's money. I don't care. You know, it's like you purple, you green, whatever. I don't care. Um, but I find it interesting that as I talk to people, I get a lot of information because I'm gonna do some specific hire car videos because one of the things that I'm finding out is that people put absolute junk on hire car. Beaters. I'm not even talking like, these cars aren't even clean. <clears throat> so one of the things I do when I get a car is I wash it, fill it up with gas, I get an oil change, I do all that. And um, 
People aren't doing that. They just throw in that car on a higher car and make some money. So it's kind of funny. Now, what's funny is she, the same car that this chick that wanted me to bring her car for free, essentially, it would have cost me, um, you know, with an Uber, because I think she was like 30 minutes away. It would have been like a 30 thirty dollar or forty or, or maybe even more Uber ride. And I was only getting thirty five bucks a day. So it what that Uber ride would have taken one rental day. And I'm just like, I'm not doing that. I'm I'm not gonna get into the habit of um trying to meet these crazy expectations. But this this is one of the things that you will find out when you start a business. This is one of the things that you will um, come to understand. This is one of the things that you will come to know once you get in the business. And this is one of the reasons that I, I'm getting ready to do so much because I'm beginning to understand why you guys think the way that you do, or I should say some of you think that way. It's because the messaging. It, you click on YouTube, you you should be making five, ten thousand dollars a month, only working five hours, maybe twenty hours a month. You should be able to start a business, make money, not work that hard. And this is these are the messages that you consistently see all over YouTube, and it's patently disgusting. Because as a seasoned operator, I know that they're they're lying to you to get views. They're lying to you to get views. And until we have people, like I have a conscience. Uh, I remember when I was putting out my storage auction information and I actually had people in the comment section, Lyndon, you should not tell people how hard it is. I actually had people telling me that. I actually had people saying that. And I said, no, no. You know, I remember years ago, I was in this unit. It was full from the ruler to the Tuda, And I was pulling up some stuff. And out, out of nowhere, this canoe comes off some boxes and hits me in the head. I'm not going to send you into a situation where, you know, I'm, I'm just telling you about that. I'm going to tell you because that happened to me. And... It almost knocked me out. I mean, I was like, you know, you've been hit so hard, you kind of dazed. I was, I was like that. I was like, what the? And you know, I've had all these experience buying units that had rats in them, live rats, um, so many things, and people were just like you, you should. And I'm like, I feel that that is the reason that that book did so well is because I told the truth. And because you have all of this, you can do this business so easy. Um, you can make all this money. You can do this so easy and not have any issues that when you reach someone like me, who is providing receipts, showing you bank accounts, showing you my paycheck, showing you A-team receipts. And it, 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 it's just like, but all of them over there said, I can do this and make this money, Glendon. And I'm like, okay, have you tried it? Have you tried it yet? Have you tried to do it? Have you tried? Because them saying you can do it is totally different than you doing it. And I see, because this is one of the things I noticed. I started to see the same people come in on these side hustle videos, which means they were they were looking, they were still searching. And I'm telling you that a lot of these um, so-called side hustles are not as, here's the issue with the side hustles, because when I, I'm gonna do my review video of this guy, here's the issue with the side hustles. 
All right, the first thing is you got to advertise. Whatever you're selling, whatever you're doing, you gotta find the marketplace that people are looking for that service. That's the first thing. I don't care if you're doing website designs, you got to have some way for people who need that service to know that you do it. And that right there is what kills most people, the marketing of their side hustle. If you're not a good marketer, you don't know how to run ads, you're probably not gonna make a lot of money. When I was like, this is coming from someone who used to sell thousands of items on Craigslist. Um, Craigslist isn't the place that it used to be. Everyone has shifted to Facebook Marketplace. Um, but I wrote, on average, 100 ads a day. And that that helped me when I came to YouTube that I, you know, when I wrote my first book, that I knew that I would have to consistently keep promoting it to get it going, to get it, to keep it going. And I already knew that. And that, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, first stage of this car business is getting the cars. And then the second stage is going to be shaping it up. And this is going to take me months to do. This is why I'm just sitting here like, you can build this business in 30 days. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little dubious about that because, like I said, it's going to take me let's see, first month, kind of getting my feet wet, second month, I know more than I knew the first month, and the third month is where I think I'm gonna reach, you know, start cooking with some gas, start doing some things a little bit differently, and by December, I should have a firm handle on this. By December, and I am a established operator, I'm a seasoned entrepreneur, Yet you got people on YouTube who are telling you that you can do what I'm doing in mere weeks. Mere weeks. And I, it, that's just one of the problems. So this is why I'm getting ready to do some new training. Uh, I'm going to, you know, once I get these cars, because uh, let me tell you, buying cars is a full-time job. You got to find the car like I said the other day I was test driving the car that literally just shut off on me during the test drive fortunately I had gotten off the highway and I was um, able to pull into the grass shut it off and then turn it back on and the guy who was trying to sell the car he was surprised he said I drove it for two weeks I said it may never happen again but it happened to me and I want to buy this car to rent it out so that's a big issue I cannot rip that out with confidence knowing that this car will do that. So, you know, and yesterday I test drove. Yesterday was particularly hard. Um, test drove four cars, three no's. Now it was just like I had to pass. They were too dirty. Because I'm starting, because once again, you make your money when you buy. And the first month I made some, well, I don't know. I can't really say that because the cars are rented. Um, I will say I made a error in putting those cars on Toro. If I had put those cars on hire car, I would have had a ten thousand dollar month. So I don't know. I can't really say. Well, I will say this. Uh, my price point is I want to be under ten thousand dollars per car. That's where I want to be because at that price point, like uh, what, what I hope works out today is I can rent those cars out for $39.99, still get them paid off in six or seven months. That's the thing, because uh, that, that $35 price point moves very rapidly on hire car, but you have to, like the Land Rovers, they, they were like almost $15,000 a piece. I can't rent them out for $35 a day. Uh, they would rent, they would go quickly at 35 bucks a day, but it would take me, I'm 
almost 16, maybe 18 months to make my money back. And I'm trying to stay away from that because essentially, if I buy a car and I can make my money back in six or eight months, that's the ticket. Because, um, you know, like I said, first month, just like, like what I'm saying in this video, you're not going to know until you get in the business. I don't care what all these fake ass YouTubers are telling you because they're gassing you up with these pipe dreams. And once again, it's to get views. Because essentially, I, I've been a YouTuber for 12 years. I know how YouTubers think. And, you know, they sit down, they craft out these thumbnails, they do this messaging, but it's junk. It's junk. And like, man, when I started doing my reviews on these challenge videos, because like I said, 30 days ain't enough time, man. Already, I'm at, I'm in my second month end of June will be 60 days because I actually started this I bought my first car April 27th and you know you know and then July because like let me tell you my plan what I want to do is have 20 cars before July because typically when you buy a car and you intake a car and put it into the system, it can take two days up to two weeks to be rented out. So at this point, I'll have all these cars well into June. Like today is June 11th, I believe. So give me my two weeks. So in July, I should be cooking with gas with all 20 cars and uh, hopefully have all of them rented out to collect that that data of what having 20 cars will do across various price points and then I can shuffle my you know cars like there's some cars uh, I think I bought a car the other day that I'm probably gonna have to sell because essentially uh, I tried to list it on Turo it has a recall if a car has a recall Turo will not let you list it even if it fits the mileage and you know, I have to take that car to the dealership and get that recall fixed. And it could take 30 days for that recall to be um, updated in the national health, whatever system. So that was one car I cannot put on Toro. And I'm finding out that there, that this, this is something that this happens a lot because I'm not buying new cars, I'm buying used cars. And, um, you know, it, it, like, it ain't a problem with hire car, but it's a problem with Turo. And at some point I have a f feeling that this will be a problem with hire car. At some point in the future, I think that's gonna come. So I'm gonna get that recall fixed and then I'm gonna put it up there. Almost bought another Land Rover yesterday, but it was it was too rough. It, it the year was right, the miles were right, but this it was rough. Like all up in here was just jacked up. I mean, some people are very hard on cars, very very hard. But essentially, I'm talking about this. I'm relaying this information to you guys so you can make better choices based on the truth versus false narratives. Because essentially this is where so many people get into trouble with these false narratives. And um, you know, yes you can start a business, but until you actually get it started, you're not gonna know. You can do all this research and I understand that people are looking for safety and comfort and a sure bet and they're looking for a shortcut, I understand that. And you wanna know what? The fastest shortcut is to actually get started and get in their business. That's going to teach you so much so quick versus watching YouTube videos, asking people, talking to people, um, him and hawing. Like right now, if you wanna do car rental, I, I suggest you start with a car that you have that's paid off, start with a spare car, and just put it on the platform and see what happens. Because until you place that car on that platform, 
you're not going to know. You're just not going to know. It's not going to know. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, there will be some new training probably starting next week where we will get into the things you need to do to get your business started. And I'm not going to be in like you can do this business line or you can do that. I'm not, I'm not getting all of that. Uh, we got a lot of people on YouTube who point out that this business exists. And, you know, rightfully so. If someone has some knowledge and they create a course, they should be remunerated for it. But, like I said, man, a lot of people are leading you guys into burning houses. And it is not pretty. It's just not pretty. So that's all I got for you guys. Look for the new training. Uh, I'll be making some announcements once I get it set up and everything. And I will talk to you guys later.